Assalamu alaikum guys Extinction Rebellion The government is telling us that this group is no good It's trying to demonize and otherize this group But I don't see this group breaking the law Or spreading anything that is inappropriate or wrong So I am intrigued to see What this group has to say And why they are doing what they're doing Guys, I've said this before and I'll say it again. As Muslims, I don't think we should only be supporting Muslim causes, yeah? We should also be supporting other causes that are dealing with injustice in other aspects, whatever they may be. Of course, within the bounds of Islamic law, yeah? If you stand up for people in their moment of need, they'll be more likely to stand up with you in your moment of need. But if you allow other people to be broken down by the government and the forces that may be, then when your turn comes, <laughs> there'll be no one left to defend you and your cause. When it comes to any group, you can't just write them off because of what you've heard in the media or one or two bad things that they've done. There's groups that are everywhere, you know, that have something bad that they've done that's on their record. But if you just look for groups that are pristine, boy, you are going to be waiting an extremely long time, yeah? If you follow this principle, take the good and leave the bad, then you are more likely to grow, yeah? Because you're being more practical, yeah? To the Extinction Rebellion protests which blocked roads outside the printing presses owned by Rupert Murdoch. The News Corp sites in Broxburn, Hertfordshire and Merseyside produced copies of several national papers. Campaigners said they wanted to prevent titles including The Sun, The Times and The Daily Mail from reaching shops today. My man, give it up top. <laughs> so Extinction Rebellion is known for their outlandish ways of protesting, which are peaceful, but some people can find it disruptive. But hey, sometimes you gotta rock the boat, isn't it? So what, they, what these guys did was they used this bamboo structure and blocked the path that goes to the printing press. So because of them, a lot of cities or areas didn't get the toilet paper. Yay! And might I add, ha! These guys managed to stop the mainstream media and cheese off the government all with a few bamboo sticks. <laughs> Let that sink in for a while, yeah? Now, obviously it's not a permanent thing, but what's very interesting and what we can take away from this is how this group and how this movement is being treated by the government. And while people like Carol Cadwallader and myself are now blacklisted by the BBC, I'm told by editors there that I'm on their extremist list. <laughs> because bear in mind these guys are to the left of the political spectrum. Majority, if you can, if, if you see their protests, they're mostly white. You know, if I was a young black woman without an established career, frightened of institutional racism within the police. You know, I, I wouldn't be putting myself forward for arrest. There, there are some things which people like me are able to do, many things that we're able to do because of this grossly unequal society. Whenever things go wrong, the government says, look, violence is not the answer. You guys can protest, there's freedom of speech, blah, blah, blah. But what's very interesting is these guys are ex exercising their freedom of speech, peaceful protests. But let's have a look at how these guys are being treated. The first thing was when they actually, with the permission of the police, staged a, I think, walk, a, a walk through with, with a boat and the police agreed. Yeah, the police agreed. But as they were doing their thing, yo, the police stopped them and said they can't continue. The police lied. That's not helping people express themselves in a democracy, is it? Number two, there's been discussions of changing the law to protect these newspapers even more. I buried those cockroaches. What they ever do for us? So anytime we have a grievance as the public, if we then do something and the government doesn't like it, they're going to change the law to further favor their own people and their own narrative. How on earth does that even make sense? And thirdly, look at the speed in which the leaders came out. Obviously the Home Secretary Priti Patel has criticised what you've done. The Labour 
um, shadow minister for the um, culture, media and sport, has said a free press is vital for our democracy, democracy, democracy. What? People have the right to read what they want. Stopping them from being distributed and printers from doing their jobs is wrong. Boris Johnson, the prime minister of this nation. They came out and bang, 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 condemning, mate, condemning. But you guys heard that Gaza was being bombed non-stop. Yeah, I think for over 10 days, BBC didn't report it. You didn't see any of these politicians come out. Hmm. The Uyghurs, I mean the most persecuted group I would say on the planet. Nothing, nothing's being done. But yet when Al-Qaeda or when ISIS does something, boom, on the first day, it's all over the front pages. Everyone's discussing it all over radio. And I, I'm actually following what these guys are doing because yeah, you may not agree with their methods and everything that's going on, but they are speaking sense. Here, I didn't even know about Tufton Street, but these guys are talking about lobbying groups and the people that are actually behind the newspapers and constructing the narrative. And you know what, guys? It's very important to know. A lot of the really radical right policies that this government is implementing emerge from places like this from 55 Tufton Street, from 57 Tufton Street, from Lord North Street, from Great Smith Street, from Great George Street. This nexus of organisations calling themselves think tanks and which obediently the media also calls think tanks. They are lobby groups. They are no different to lobby groups like Bell Pottinger or Burson Marsteller who represent I would suggest you guys research all the names he's mentioned because there's a lot of interesting things that will come to light. Yeah, For example, just Bell Pottinger, you'll see, was given the responsibility by the US to fake terrorist videos. Now this isn't a conspiracy, you can search this sort of stuff up. This was big news many years ago, but Bell Pottinger is the name behind it. Devious, destructive, corporate and oligarchic interests Except for this, they do not reveal who funds them. If the government's telling you this group is bad, I would, I would see why, why is the government so scared of this particular group? Yeah, what are they saying? Because if they were a bunch of looney tunes, no one would pay attention. A lot of people are saying, oh, if we don't have anything to hide, what we don't need to worry, even if the government's spying on us, or this technology, yeah, so what if the government has this sort of power? It's only the terrorists that need to worry. I look over here with this group, yeah, because the government disagrees with them, it's calling them extremists, it's calling them crime groups. So I guess what I'm trying to say, guys, is today you might be saying something that's pro-government. If tomorrow you're saying something that's anti-government, does that mean that now you're going to be called a terrorist? And all of these laws that are used against terrorists that you're happy with are going to be applied to you? I don't know guys, it's a, it's a risk. Let's leave it there guys, a bit of food for thought. Until next time. Assalamu <laughs> alaikum.